coach, how would you just kind of assess the, the linebacker play from last week outside of Jack Hyder, just the young guys getting their first real experience? Yeah, I thought they uh, did a nice job. We rolled them through there. They responded. thought they had a great look on the sideline. Um, executed really well. Uh, really, it was immaterial where we were in the game, um, whether it was low red zone, you know, fourth and two, didn't matter. Whoever was up was up, and that's as simple as that. So they did a great job communicating. They did a great job running the front, and hopefully they'll make a big game here between game one and game two. And then I know you don't like talking about last week's game now, but was there ever a point in the game where you felt like you were in Connor Whitman's head just with your pre-snap stuff? No. I just think, um, you know, we – the guys on the back end did a great job. Uh, you know, we had a great marriage of, of rush and coverage. Everybody was on the same page. Uh, we made a couple more plays than them. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day, just a couple more plays. And obviously the offense putting together that drive, you know, I think it was at the six something mark. You know, that was a big, that was a big drive. And then our guys went out and responded, you know, on the next four. So, uh, and then obviously the kick at the end. So, you know, that's, uh, Complimentary football right there. All three, uh, all three elements there in the last, you know, five minutes of game contributed, and I think that more ha- had more to do with it than anything. Northern Illinois has a lot of returning starters. It's nine on offense. Just your thoughts on them and the challenge that they bring. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of challenges schematically, uh, a lot of different personnel uh, uh, usage, uh, and then uh, the personnel uh, formationing, but also then the personnel itself, right? So eighty-one. At tight end, a guy who can get vertical, uh, big long target, good hands, uh, 49, blocking tight end, does a heck of a job, physical, um, you know, three at the wideout spot, number one at tailback. Uh, we might see both quarterbacks, two and 14, so uh, I think the O line is rugged. Uh, and they believe what they're doing. You know, that's the biggest thing. They believe in what they're doing in terms of uh, the different runs and different groupings, uh, and they, they make it a challenge defensively. So uh, we really got to be. We got to be focused. Today was a good start. It really was. Um, we got to come back tomorrow and uh, and uh, build on that. You've been around this game a, a few years. Where does this secondary rank for you in terms of how good it is compared to ones you've had in the past? Well, it, it, you know, again, to talk about it is is you know it's futile, right? I mean, at the end of the day, we got to go out and do it. You know, we can people on the outside could say whatever they want to say. Uh, we didn't listen to them last week when they didn't pick us. We're not listening to them this week. Uh, and it's really about one day. Like, we had a good day today. We needed to have a good day um, and get this early down plan in versus all these groupings. And our guys responded. The communication was good. Uh, you know, we, we got after the ball. We ran to the ball well. Now we got to regroup. Now we got to put it all together, early downs and third down. But um, in terms of, you know, the back end, uh, they're competitors. You know, that's how they want to be known. So th- they will be tested. And uh, I can't wait to, to, you know, to be next on when it happens. Coach, how do you continue to get the intensity going? Obviously, Northern Illinois is at the same level of difficulty potentially as um, Texas A&M. How do you continue the intensity um, coming into practice like this? Well, again, I don't have to remind you of, of some of the threats the last couple of years that have gotten us. And, and uh, this is a team that's playing really well. I think they've won eight of the last ten or something significant like that. Uh, and they're just playing good football, you know what I mean? So. Um, I, they got our full attention, and if, if they don't, just watch 81 or watch number one on a stretch play or, or watch 49 on a crack, uh, you know, pin and pull play, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're going to need every ounce of energy we have this week uh, because of how challenging the system is. Did the offense allow you to be more aggressive on defense because of the production maybe in the second half? Our offense? I thought it was unbelievable in the second half just, you know, because uh, we had a chance to kind of uh, regroup. Uh, after they tied it up at 13, we had a chance to regroup. And the next time we went back out, you know, we felt good about the direction we were going to go call-wise. But, you know, that's who we're going to have to be. We're going to have to be a great complementary team. And, and uh, to see to see Riley and, and, and the O-line and the running backs do what they did and the wide receivers blocking and then Bo making a big play, like that's, that's what it takes to go into an environment like that. It's not just, you know, uh, X had a good game or Jordan Batello had a good game. It's... It's, uh, you know, the contributions of so many guys and then so many guys that you're not even aware of. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's what nets that result. And uh, that's probably what we're most proud of. Curious, on your, thoughts on, okay. Curious on your thoughts about how the, uh, the helmet communication went and the iPad usage, how that worked out for you uh, 
doing a game? Yeah, you know, the helmet uh, communication was okay. Uh, it got loud at times, obviously. Uh, um, but I thought we battled through it. We got to continue to, you know, refine it and get better. Uh, and I think the same thing with the, 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 the you know, the, the, the surfaces. You know, just you can get mesmerized by watching the game. And I'm really trying to do everything I can not to do that. You know, we can grade it the next day, but we have to move on and get information to them quickly. I'll give you an example. So if you're, if you're sitting there on the surface and your head's down and you haven't covered what you need to cover and all of a sudden there's a play that results in our defense having to go back out, like it's a mess. So we really have to make sure that we're doing what we need to do in the order we need to do it on the sideline. And then if we have time for the services, that, then we can do that. You guys have a great week, all right? Thanks, Bo, can you take us through that catch on the sideline? Yes, sir. Did you uh, think you got your foot down? Uh, yeah, I had a feeling I did. That's why I got up so hyped, man. It was kind of just crazy. I worked on that in practice pretty much off all camp, just 50-50 balls. I had some trouble with them beginning of camp and uh, just started to come together. And then in the game, it, it, it happened when we needed it for sure. And then they were able to get you the ball in several different ways. Was that like sure. a confidence boost for you, just knowing that you could do all that stuff? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. I haven't gotten touches like that in a minute, man. Uh, just, you know, catching screens, um, helping my team out in any way possible to, you know, get close to first downs, get first downs and things like that. So, yeah, it's definitely a confidence boost just uh, knowing that my coaches trust me, QB trust me, and things like that for sure. And then you've won big games in the past. What can that do for a program? Oh, yeah, it's big. Um, it can, you know, turn a lot of things around just as far as, like, how we look at the season and how we prepare for each game, man. Like, games like that going, especially road games. And Texas A&M is the hardest place to play in the country. So things like that are, are just major confidence boosters for the whole entire team, for the young guys. It just makes us come to work the next day even harder. Well, I'm a, um... I'm going to rip the mandate out there and go back to that play, man. <laughs> but what goes through your mind when you make a grab like that again? Yeah. Does Coach Brown say what could have happened um, from the officials? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, not going to lie, kind of – it was an out-of-body experience when I got up, man. I was just – uh, overly excited. Uh, can't can't do that for real, for real. But um, man, I was just excited. It was a little exchange back and forth throughout the game. Me and the DB just, you know, going at it, being competitors for sure. And uh, yeah, Coach Brown definitely <laughs> walked on the field right after. It was like, hey man, Coach Brown and Coach Free was like, hey, you gotta chill out. And uh, I completely understood. I kind of like zoned back in. Ref walked up to me, was like, hey, what do you what do you think you're doing? Blah blah blah. And I was just like, oh, shoot, like, I could have cost you this big time right there. And, uh, man, it's just something to learn from. Can't, can't let it happen again, for sure. Obviously, in those environments, things like that happen all the time. But as a uh, veteran, do you yeah. help bring along guys like Great House and things like that in, in those type of environments because yeah. you know just how intense it can get? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. It's, it's really about body language, man. Like, the guys, they – a lot of younger dudes look up to guys like myself and just see how we react to things, how we uh, prepare, like pregame stuff, like if we're out there just looking around and awe and things like that. So, yeah, definitely going into it with a mindset of um, just going in there, executing and handling our business is, is big time. And Coach Free talked about Riley being able to mm -hmm. find confidence in you uh, yes, later throughout the game. Riley joked about taking them three quarters to get adjusted, <laughs> uh, acclimated. But, yeah. Uh, what was that connection like once you guys were able to just find and know where each other wanted to be? You know, he knew where, mm -hmm. he knew where you wanted to be in order to grab. Oh, man, it just took reps, I'd say. Like, throughout the game, uh, I, I knew I could get some of those deep balls going, but uh, I wasn't overly anxious, wasn't pushing it for, uh, no, you know, Riley to speed up his reads or anything like that. I just wanted him to be comfortable back there, get the rhythm of the game and things like that, and it was all going to take care of itself. And kind of... Kind of a two-part question. Mm -hmm. One, Freeman talked about why well, receivers can, you know, they want the ball. Yeah, um, for sure. How much do you guys want to take the top off? Maybe you guys like Chris Mitchell, but also how important and essential was the blocking in that matchup yeah. with you guys on the outside? Oh, yeah, man. Games like that, of course, game one, you want the rock. Like, we practice a whole bunch of plays where we're going deep, deep balls, um, head topping them and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, just focusing on our job, whatever needed to get done at that moment. Even Coach Brown mentioned um, – but prior to the game that morning, like we may have to run the ball 60 times or we may throw it 60 times, whatever you got to do to get your job done, do it. So that's the mindset we went out there with. All right, we good?
Can you more? First home game, first home game of the week coming up. Just yes, talk sir. about how you feel about it. Oh yeah, I'm excited, man. Uh, I was able to be up here for one game day a couple years back, and it didn't go my way. But uh, this week, man, I'm, I'm just excited to have all the fans um, just see what we've been working toward and all the work we put in, just display it for the home fans here, up here, man, for sure. Jordan, you were flying around on Saturday. I guess how much fun was that just to impact the game like that? I feel like that game was really fun, you know, just seeing the uh, all the fans there from both teams. It just got everybody going. It was just a, a great time playing. And then how do you kind of build off of that performance? I feel like you just watch film and you just attack. Like, there's a lot of things that me, myself, I can uh, learn from that game. So I'm just excited to attack, attack and work on your uh, small details. And then along those lines, Coach Freeman said your preparation has kind of taken a step forward. I guess, what have you kind of done to, to do that? I feel like watching my film, uh, Seabass, meeting with Seabass, and he's going over and we watch the tackles. I feel like that uh, helped me to prepare for the games. So. What are you? What are you looking forward to bringing to the table this year compared to your previous season? You know, I, I'm just trying to do my job, just do my one out of eleven. And hopefully, I can bring some energy for the team and uh, everybody can feed off of that. Jordan, I was gonna ask that kind of question. Um, your energy, man, it's like it, it comes out whenever you're ready for it, and you know you play hard. I guess. The results on, on game one, are you satisfied with how you feel about it? Uh, I mean, I, I'm very thankful. We're all very thankful and blessed for a win, but just like I said, we, we watch film. And there's lots of things we can work on. So, but it's exciting. When, uh, the plays that you didn't do good on, because you can learn from it and you can just attack that, and you know you can get so much better. Rick, you said the defensive player of the game uh, could have gone to you or Kyle Cross along with Xavier Watts, man. Um, how tight are you guys, you know, from every single level of the defense practice? I mean, I feel like we just a whole, everybody just work together and uh, complement, complementary football. So we all just do our job and everybody uh, can hit success from it. Yeah. How does the performance of yourself help Rodney Mills, Howard Cross, Trey, RJ, and vice versa? You know, how do you guys play off each other in that regard? It's great. You know, so like when we set the edges, they can fill the gaps. And like, you know, we just uh, work off of each other and get, uh, play for each other. What up, man? What up? How are you? Good, man. Good. And talk about uh, that game, man. A lot of success out there for you and the rest of the linebacker court, man. You guys move fast and you hit hard. How, how was that? Well, it's just great to see all my boys playing fast, playing hard. Uh, Coach Freeman. <clears throat> really talked to us before the game and like he really got us all hyped up so we we're all ready to go so it was a great game talk about that moment man that's viral you know like three men out there playing you know seeing the linemen hyping you guys up we've never seen it have you guys ever seen that you know pre-game um and, and what was that like to the out-of-body out of body experience uh, i've never seen it but i know it got me fired up i was ready to go after that Jalen, you played multiple positions on Saturday. I guess, how do you feel like that plays to your strengths? Uh, I mean, Golden has always told me that I'm going to be a versatile guy in his defense, and I just took that, and I'm just going to keep playing hard and keep learning as much as I can to become the best player I can because being able to play all over the field gets you a chance at the next level. And then was there ever a point that you guys felt you were in the quarterback's head at some point? Uh, no, he, the quarterback played pretty well, I think. JB and versatile. Is there a position that maybe you may favor over the other? Ooh. I do love rushing the passer, but I also love tackling, so I can't really choose one. Jalen, when you um the communication from the headset that's coming down to Drake or or, uh, or Jet, how did that help you all play faster? Did it slow things down? What was the adjustment like versus previous years? Mm -hmm. Um I don't know. I mean, I felt like it's definitely like easier to communicate because they were able to tell me, and then I was able to get it to the line. And like one of the linebackers were, were able to tell the DBs. So it was just great to have like one of us communicating with one, and then both of us getting together, making our calls, and it was just easy. It's just with, the, with guys like Xavier Watts on uh, back there, and even uh, Benjamin out out the uh, corner. Does that how much? I guess. Confidence that it gives you guys to be aggressive, play Ma fast. Makes it so much easier to know that your DBs are behind you, they're locking up, then you know you can go hug, go add, go make a play on the QB. Uh, yeah. This home opener against Northern Illinois doesn't have the same level of like, you know. For us, it does. Yeah. It's the same level of importance. It's 
a great game. Uh, we're going to come playing fast and hard. Coach, you had the iPads on the sideline this week. How did that help you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it was invaluable for us. Uh, you know, we're we're not uh, laden with uh, sixth-year seniors or fifth-year seniors. We got some new faces and some new spots, and being able to communicate with those guys, not only you know verbally, but show them on the iPad, you know what I mean, exactly what was going on on that snap in that game, and be really specific with the details of how we wanted to adjust things. I thought really paid a lot of dividends as the game went along. You coached this game from the sideline. I think last year, LSU, you were in the box. Which one do you prefer? Um, I don't know. I, I, I usually try to judge that based on a, a number of different factors. I mean, I, I, I think this decision came down to what was best for this group of young men that, that we're working with this year on the offensive side. You know, last year I didn't feel like that was as necessary as, it, as maybe it is this year. So made the decision to be down and, and – and really, because we have so many new faces, it gives me an opportunity to kind of be hands-on with all the different groups, and especially in the environment that we were in Saturday night, uh, communicate directly with everybody, uh, whether it's players or coaches or whoever that happens to be. Was there something you saw in the run game that allowed you to stay patient, or is it one of those things where the dam's going to break at some point? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I believed, as, as we all did in – the decisions that we made on who was going to be playing offensive line for us. And and it was important to continue to give those guys opportunities to settle their feet and get into the game. Um, and, and listen, good run games against good defenses kind of entail what how the game kind of unfolded, right? It, it's not very pretty in the beginning. And it, it, once in a while, you'll hit one kind of midway through the second and third quarter. And then if you've done enough damage and, and your guys are playing as physical and aggressive as they need to be, uh, the damage really comes in the fourth quarter. And I thought that's what played out Saturday. What, uh, Along those lines, what would you consider a step forward this week for Anthony and Sam? Yeah, I mean, I think just consistency. And, uh, you know, that's across the board for us offensively, not just for those two guys. I, you know, a lot of the things that caused us issues on Saturday night, even though the environment was hostile and, and all that, were self-inflicted wounds. And we, we've got to stay out of long yardage situations, stay ahead of the sticks. You know, some of that is decision-making, some of that's play calling, some of that's play design. All those things play into it. we got to do a better job of helping them be more consistent, and then they, they've got to go out and do it. Coach, what, what grade, if you can, grade, or I guess rating on a scale of 1 to 10, what are you giving the offensive line? Young guys that went out there perform pretty well to a lot of people's standards. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a, two separate questions, right? So as far as how they attack the game, their mentality for the game, how they played the game physically, uh, off the charts. Uh, you know, they, we got from them exactly what we expected to get from them. Um, toughness, you know, uh, a physical attitude about playing the game that a Notre Dame offensive line plays with. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's technical issues and where you put your hands and where you put your feet and how you communicate to the guy next to you that may have led to some things that, you know, were we need to do better. So, you know, the heart of this offense and the heart of this football team, uh, I don't think you can question very much based on the way the game went, how it played out, and what happened at the very end. Um, there's a million things that we have to concentrate on this work and be so much better at going into next week's game or this week's game. One more, one more. Go ahead. How do you build carries between love and price? Yeah, I mean, it, that's a. Both of those guys deserve to have the hand, their their hands on the football. So, you know, I think as the year goes along, there'll be games where Jeremiah gets the the bulk of the carries. There'll be games maybe where JD gets the bulk of the carries, and we're move, we're using Jeremiah maybe in different ways. But you know, those guys are important pieces of what we do offensively, and they both have to be a big piece of it as we go forward. Anthony, first drive, what, I guess what was kind of just going through your head when you were walking out there? Um, you know. Playing in front of 107,000 people as a true freshman, a lot of things are going through your head, but at the same time, you got a job to do. And so by after that first play, it's just kind of like, you know, you're there, you get it, you get those whole people cheering, you know, we practice for it. It's just kind of like one play at a time. So it's just kind of thing, just get my job done, doing the right thing for the boys next to me. Um, yeah, it's kind of another, like a business trip, I guess, is the best way to say it. So, uh, 
the anxiety after that is just kind of gone, and then you're just playing football again, you know. And then how long did it take you to just settle in and just be like, I can do this? I would say after maybe two or three plays, going against the best, you know, kind of feeling my technique out a little bit, feeling them out a little bit. I know what I'm capable of, and so I feel like once I got that under my belt, it's very easy for me to say, all right, well, now it's up to me and see, you know, I, I'm confident what I can do and the anxiety is going away. I'm here for a reason. The coaches believe in me. The people next to me believe in me. Riley believes in me. So now it's just time to play football. How much, how much did Freeman's pregame speech, you know, before you came out of the tunnel, how much did that help you? Um, he said he went there for you and you guys like Sam. He kind of looked at you as like, like he was like your parent in that moment. Yeah. I mean, a guy like Coach Freeman, he's just not a coach. You know, I mean, obviously he's a coach, but he's more than a coach. Um, he's just so electric. It's just having someone like that in your corner saying they believe in you makes you just want to go run through a brick wall. You know, I mean, they helped in the choices that helped me be in that position where I am today. So um, it just it gives you that extra burst of confidence that I know what I can do. I know I'm here to, you know, not make it bigger than what it is. Um, you know, trust your guys because they're going to trust you. And it just helped out a whole bunch, to be honest with you. You guys are young on the offensive line, but who is the, I guess, leader, whether that's vocally or just by action? I would say we got, um, yeah, we have a couple vocal leaders, but I think we're big on action leaders. You know, someone like Billy Strouth. It's just that's a guy who's going to put his body on the line. It's just that's someone who I based my inspiration to. Um, you know, Ashton Craig. Uh, it's just always going to be there. It's always going to be positive. It's just those two guys, I feel like, together as a combo, one leading by action, one leading by words and action. You know, it's just it's just a great combination, I'd say, and great people to look up to. And that's just what I've been looking up to all fall camp. So. And Riley Leonard talked about the amount of confidence that he had in you all before yeah. the game. What's that relationship like? What's the conversation like before Texas A&M? What are they like now? So you kind of got through the trenches and now you can focus on the home opener. Yeah, I mean, a guy like Riley's great. You know, um, obviously it's kind of weird. You know, he's so old and I'm so young, but... At the end of the day, the age, uh, football, the field doesn't care about your age. So, um, you know, a guy like that is pretty cool because, you know, he's, he says it so calmly. Of course, he's got confidence in us, you know. Um, and just it's, it feels good when people believe in you because then it makes you want to believe in them and believe in yourself. And having a guy like Riley, a leader like that behind me, just makes me want to protect him even more. So, Coach, how would you assess James's performance in his first collegiate game? Yeah, I thought he did a great job handling the environment. You know, obviously a very hostile environment. And, uh, you know, you could see as the game went on, he got a little more comfortable. Um, having, you know, the iPads there were definitely helpful to show him that, uh, hey, this is, you know, a lot of the looks that we were practicing all leading up to it. Um, but I think he really settled in. And I think, you know, even more you'll be able to see big strides, you know, the next, the next couple of weeks where he can just be comfortable. And then what were your overall grades or impressions of just the special teams units overall? Uh, um, you know, I thought they did pretty well. Uh, kickoff coverage, you know, was was uh, was great. Um, although, you know, we should have had a second tackle, you know, inside the, the, the 20. Um, but we had a lot of new young guys on there, you know, Bryce Young, Logan Thomas, KBA, Max Hurlman, guys, you know, and, and so we were able to, um, pin somebody, pin them down inside the 20 on one of them, and you know they were able to see on film the other return. We were right there. Um, now we got to go finish it, make the play, you know, again. And so uh, I thought that was great. Um, I thought you know punt being able to flip the field and having three punts down inside the 20 was big momentum for us um, to make them knowing with our defense that they're going to have to truly drive the field. Um, kickoff return, you know, we went back and watched it. And we really feel like we left a an explosive opportunity out there with you know one one block um so we got a lot to clean up just to to be better and um you know uh same thing on on swat you know we can't let a team be able to have a 49 yard net and flip the field um the couple times they did so but uh i thought the effort was great um i thought the the willingness to want to really correct it was really impressive when we came back and watched it on monday and to get texts from guys that were saying you know, even after the game, because they're watching it, you know, like, coach, I should have done, or, got, you know, it's just, it's unheard of, which is great. When you have a guy like Mitch Jeter, how much does that make your job easier as a special teams coach, and how much can that impact a team when you have a guy that you know can go into an environment like that and go three for three? Yeah, I, I think it, you know, it, it's a great feeling. Um, it's something that, you know, we expect when he got here, and it's a really testament to that whole unit. You know, we had three new specialists performing on that unit that had, that had uh, 
you know, never really played, um, at least in a Notre Dame uniform, Mitch had, but uh, Chris Salerno had never even been, you know, in a game uh, as the holder. And Reno being in an environment for a first test was, was impressive. The protection was great. You know, um, there wasn't a doubt or discussion on the sideline, you know, of, of even on that last kick, what are we going to do? And so uh, I think that's a testament to that whole group consistently showing the last two weeks leading up uh, to, to the game that, hey, they, you know, they had a really good two weeks. I think we missed um, one kick within those two weeks uh, with, with that unit. Putting on your safety, safety's hat, uh, just tell us a little bit about your thoughts on the way Adon Jeweler played that first game, obviously getting that big INT. Yeah, I thought, I thought he played really well. He's got to clean up uh, a lot with his eyes. You know, he's got to be uh, disciplined, but um, was, was totally locked in, handled the moment. Uh, our moments uh, really, really maturely. And so um, same thing, it's what can he do better and what does he have to clean up? And um, he was one of the first people that was ready to watch film and, and, and get better. So uh, I think it's a credit to his preparation. I think it's a credit to um, him leaning on the veteran guys who have played and working on communication and um, it allowed him to play really, really fast. And you see what happens when our defense can do that. Coach, how, how does Jordan, not having Jordan face on does it change up how you attack on the turn it off? No. Uh, you know, we had kind of said going in that we had, you know, uh, JG and Jordan back there. And so, um, you know, we feel really confident. And we'll have one to two other people possibly back there ready for this coming week that that were a great uh, 1C and 1D option if we ever need to use it. Um, but the great part is some of those guys that um, – could go back there. Max Herleman and Aeneas, they can also be on the front line. And so we're not going to waste time and have them just stand back there if they can if they can help us, um, you know, on the front line in that in that scheme as well. I know you kind of talked about it, but in that environment when you guys kind of traded three and outs, you know, the importance of, of flipping the field and putting um, Texas A&M on the heels. Yeah, you know, battle of field position. Turnovers and battle of field position is, is huge in a game like that. And so, uh, Again, any time that we can we can do our, our part on special teams, our, our part on defense, whether it's interceptions, creating turnovers, or pinning a team back, we feel uh, you know that that we can be in a great spot to help you know the overall makeup of the of the team perform. I, I asked Jalen Smith this question, but I asked I'm trying to gauge whether what the difficulty is moving on from A and M to NIU. Now he says there's nothing no difference. You know how do you feel about that, and what's the approach, and how do you keep that intensity going. Um, both yeah, I, I think for the most part, you know, Coach Freeman does such a great job of driving home, you know, avoid any noise. And, uh, you know, we're on a mindset of team glory. And so, you know, as soon as you get individualized, individually based, it's, it's uh, you know, it can start to really pick at a team. And so our guys have done a great job, our captains and our leaders and our seniors. It's, you know, as soon as Monday hit, we turned the page after about half the meeting watching and cleaning up what we needed to. Um, it, it was on to the next one.